What's up, this is GM, and before I start, I want to tell you about TubeBuddy. In case you don't know, TubeBuddy is a free website that will help you manage and grow your YouTube channel. Thanks to them, some of my videos even show up as top results. Want to give them a try? Check the description below for the link. Today's product is Lumiere's K66 Gateron Switch Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. I will do a little sound test a little bit later in the video, but for starters, in the box we have the keyboard, we have the wire, which is just a standard USB-C to USB. And then we have a manual that is in English. However, it's not the most helpful. I mean, it's okay. It gives the info you need. But I'm hoping I can help you a little bit more with this video that I'm making. So this keyboard is pretty awesome. It has separate lighting abilities for both the border and the keys, which I'll show in a bit. To give you a quick breakdown, I plan to show you the lighting effects how it sounds and how it performed in game. Also, if you already know you want to buy this keyboard, check the description below because you save when you use my link plus the special discount code in the description. Let's start with some info on the keyboard itself. So the keyboard is 320 millimeters by 110 millimeters by 30 millimeters, which is 12.6 inches by 4.3 inches by 1.2 inches. It weighs about 1.27 pounds, comes with Gateron switches. You can get it in multiple switches, including black, blue, brown, and red. And over here I have red switches, which I'll show as well. It has 66 keys. It has an acrylic body, which means it'll be a bit more fragile, but that's also why the lighting effects look so awesome on this keyboard, as you'll see in a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you one of the switches. So I'll go ahead and move it a little bit. Zoom in. So I'm just going to use my hands to pull it, this one off. And there you go. I got red switches, which are a little bit less clicky, which personally I prefer to use since I have a lot of keyboards, mechanical keyboards with different switches. I found that red personally seems to be what works for me. So now I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out. All right, so now I'm gonna go and show you the bottom of the keyboard. I always like to show the bottom, and I'll show it again once I turn on the lights, but for now, I just wanted to show you. It might be a little hard to see, but it has four rubber pads on the sides, and if I put it at a slight angle, nah, you probably won't be able to see, but one of them is bigger, so the back ones are both bigger than the front ones. You might be able to tell from this angle just a little bit. Another thing you might notice is if I put it at this angle, you can see a sub-legend under some of the keys, mostly for the escape, one through the plus sign, the insert key, the delete key, all the arrow keys, control, space, and this control as well. Those all have separate legends. And just so you get an idea, one through plus are F12, and then I'll go over the rest of these as I go through the video, except for up and down or page down and page up. But everything else pretty much controls the lighting effects, which I will be doing. I'll go ahead and just hit a couple keys so you can get an idea of the sound that it makes with red switches. So as you can tell, when I press it all the way, it does make a decent amount of sound. If I was to just lightly tap the buttons, let me go and show you what that sounds like. So that was without pressing it all the way, and you can tell it does still have a little bit of sound just from the keys themselves. So now I'm going to go ahead and plug it in, and I will go ahead and turn off this light so you can see all of the lighting effects. But before I do that, I want you to keep in mind some of the placements of the keys in case it's a little hard to tell once the lights are off. So over here we have the left control, over here is the right control, the space, left and right arrow, and then insert and delete. And then for these, the insert and delete control brightness, arrows will control music or pretty much volume for your computer or laptop, so we won't really need to mess with these. Right control will control the center lighting effects, left control will control the border lighting effects, and space will let you select a certain color option. So now when I turn off the lights, I will say which keys I'm pressing, but in case you can't see too well where I'm pressing, you have at least an idea. Also, just to show you real quick, you plug in the USB-C right over here. They made the opening nice and wide in case you need to use a different type of cord than what they gave you since certain cords might have a bigger 
little plastic thing around this space. And then you might notice also it has three boards. The first board is where the lighting effects for the keys usually are. And then the bottom two are for the border lights as well as the bottom light, which I will be showing a little bit later. All right, so as you can already tell, just my room still has a decent amount of light, but I'm gonna go and plug it in now so you can see how bright it actually gets. So as you can see, it gets super bright to the point where even with some light in the room, it still overtakes that light, if that makes sense. So to control brightness, you press function and insert or delete. So insert would be to increase, delete is to decrease. So I'll go ahead and decrease it first. So one, two, three levels, and then one, two, three levels going back up. So the fact that it does have three levels means that you don't need to be overwhelmed by the lighting effects, which is really nice. I'll keep it at max for the entirety of the video though, just so it will be easier to see for the video. So you can change your audio on your computer, as I mentioned with function and left and right arrows, which will increase and decrease the volume. So let me go ahead and change this to a solid color so you can get an idea of all the variants it can pretty much do. So to do that, first you wanna press function and space. Now what it did was it pulled up a, a palette of colors for you to choose from. So you can see each row kind of going diagonally has its own color. So let's say we wanted to do kind of like a blue green shade. So now what I'll do is I'll press one of these keys. So let's go with E. Eh, that's a little too green for me. Let's go with R. There we go. So now you can see it's all a solid color and it's gonna do that lighting effect for both the inside and the outside with that color scheme or for this case, that solid color. I really like the way that you choose your color because it really saves you a little bit of time from having to keep pressing like a function and a switch key. This way you can just choose the exact color you want and see what it looks like before you choose and you get an idea of all the different colors that you really have for this one keyboard. And as I mentioned, you can change the lighting effects for a single color, which I'll show in a bit. If you wanted to switch this back to rainbow though, it might be a little hard to see, but the space bar is actually changing into different colors, so that signals the rainbow. So let's hit that, and everything returns to that beautiful looking rainbow. So now, let's move on to the color modes. For starters, you can actually control the sides and center separately, as I've mentioned, which allows for a massive number of pretty much color options as well as scheme options. But let's look at the center colors first. So I'm just gonna go and pause real quick and turn off the border colors so that way we can really focus on what's happening in the center. All right, so I've turned off the side lighting, which you might be like, it doesn't look like it, but it actually has. It's just that the top, middle, pretty much all the keys are so bright as well that it can cover up the sides, which means that if you want the entire keyboard to be one lighting effect throughout you can pretty much just turn off the side or the border lighting effect with function and control. You have to go through a couple modes and then you can just control the center lighting which pretty much looks really nice on its own as well. So the very first lighting we have is just a static rainbow. And just as a reminder to change the center lights, you're doing function and control. If you want to change the border, you do function and control left versus if you want to do the center, it's function control right. But anyways, let's continue on. So if you press function and control again, we have a rainbow that's flowing rightwards. I'll leave this on for just a little bit so you can get a look at it. Now it's just gonna be lit up and changed through the various colors and I'll let it cycle through a couple colors. Now we pretty much just have a rainbow that is breathing, which I really like. This one looks similar to the one where the colors change, but it actually seems to be doing it in a slightly faster wave going across. Now we have the rainbow flowing downward. Now this one seems like it's off, but what it actually does is when I press the button, it's gonna shoot a rainbow out from whichever key I press. So let's just hit the function key. So as you can see, it shoots a really big rainbow all throughout all the keys. Now what's gonna happen is whenever I press a key, it's gonna light up a single color. And as you can see, it changes a color each time I press it. So it's just a random color every single time. But if, I'll just press it really quickly so you can see it just cycle through all those colors. Now what's gonna happen is it's gonna shoot out a trail from that one line going horizontal. You can see, press a different key this time. 
As you can see, it just shoots up on that one row. I like to call this one just a color explosion since it just seems to be random colors all over the keyboard, but it seems to look a little bit more saturated than some of the other effects, so keep that in mind. This one just seems to light up random keys throughout the keyboard. This seems to be a quick row of colors going downward. I'll leave this on for just a bit so you can look at it. Next up we just have a snaking pattern, kind of like a wing flapping though to me because it looks like from the center it's just pushing up and down as it goes across. Now we have a downward wave from the top left. This one is just having the color go in small groups across. As you can see though, it seems to keep yellow and orange and red all in this area, and then it goes green, kind of a lighter blue, blue, and then I guess it just gets to a dark blue at the end there. This one will shoot bursts of color left to right, and then right to left. And then we have just a center solid color. This will pretty much light it all up and push it outward from the center. As you can see, the center is one color and then it just spreads outward as it goes across. So kind of like a sun. And now all the lights are off. So I'm actually gonna leave it off for the center and I'm going to do the siding so that way you can focus again just on the siding effects. But anyways, first I want to mention that was a total of 18 lighting modes plus the off for just the center. That is a lot of lighting modes and the fact that you can do it with solid colors or with the rainbow means that you get a lot of variety with this one keyboard. But let's go ahead and move on to the four border schemes. So first off, you press function and left control. And the first one we have up is a rainbow around the border. I'll let that go for a bit so you can take a look at that. And if I was to put this to a solid color, then it would just do a solid color snaking all the way around, which I can show in a bit. Now we have one where it just switches through the rainbow colors. Oop, wrong key. This one is now just breathing one color at a time. And I'll let it breathe through a couple colors before switching. Oop, my bad. Accidentally turn that on. Next up, we have just a solid color. And then if I do it one more time, it will turn off. So now you kind of get an idea of all of the various colors. I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like with, let's say, this color again. And obviously you saw nothing happen and that's because I turned off all the lighting modes. But let's look at just the border with this one. So remember this one was the one where the colors were going around the border. This one is a rainbow only mode. So this one pretty much can only be done with the rainbow. Then we have the breathing with the light blue. And then we have the solid blue and then we have off. So you're gonna notice for certain schemes it's going to only work for rainbow. But that's okay because there are other schemes that are pretty much the same thing that will work for a solid color. So that's kind of like to reduce the redundancy of it. Now I will just quickly go through the center ones. I won't be naming them, I'll just go through it really quickly so you can just see through them. This again is one of the ones where it is always a rainbow mode. As you can see, it looks really nice with all of these different modes as well, even when it's just solid. I actually really like this one. Then this one is where I press the key, it'll light up, snake out, or shoot out. Honestly, you may want to actually do this with a solid color first, so that way you can get an idea of which scheme you actually want, because it can kind of be hard to tell sometimes when it has so many colors, such as the rainbow mode, to know exactly what the effect is doing. 
And we should be close to finishing this one. Again, this is another rainbow mode, and then here we are at the end. So that was all of the lighting modes. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn all of it back on just to the standard one. Personally, I, I like this one just because it's so colorful, but hey, that's just me. Okay, so now that I've turned it completely back on, I wanted to show you the side and then the bottom. So here is the side, and you probably can't tell from the video, but actually the top plate, as I mentioned before, is only really controlling the key lighting from the looks of it. And then the bottom two plates are the ones that are controlling the lights that are going around the border. And here's what it looks like on the bottom. As you can see, since the lights are on the bottom, some of you might not like that. Personally, I do. And the reason I like this is because it has that slight elevation, so the light will spew out from the bottom and actually illuminate pretty much the entire space. So let me go and place this down. So you can see the lights are spewing out. And honestly, for me, it's actually coming out to right about, eh, probably about three to four inches out considering there is some light in my room as well. My camera's probably adjusting for that though, so you probably can't tell as well, but it is spewing pretty far out, which I really personally love, because I think it makes my whole gaming setup look really nice, especially since I have an Alienware laptop, so it also has lighting effects, plus my mouse, which has various color schemes as well. And then I also use an RGB gaming mat as well, so I get a really good overall lighting setup. It just looks so great when it's all mixed together like that. So now you might be wondering, okay, it's good for lighting and all that, but is it really good for games? Well, I used it and I thought it was perfect. I pretty much tried it on Valorant, Paladins, CSGO, Call of Duty Warzone. And my stats seem to be consistent with all my other keyboards after a few rounds of adjusting because obviously it's gonna take a little while to adjust since this right here has a bit of a dip with no wrist rest. So since I don't have a separate one, I had to adjust for that a little bit and my hand had to get used to a slightly different position on the keys. But once it did that, I actually noticed that I was doing exactly the same as I usually would when I use any other mechanical gaming keyboard. My final thoughts on this is that I just love the white keycaps that they used because it honestly wouldn't look right if it didn't have white keycaps because you have the acrylic white base the white keycaps and then when the lights come through it isn't being blocked as much as if it was a black keycap i feel like the white since it will kind of reflect a little bit more of the light because black keycaps since they're black they should absorb some of the light but since these are white they're going to actually reflect it a little bit and that's going to make it a little bit brighter to look at also, the lights go up to 16.8 million colors, so the transitions are super smooth as well. You can't really beat the lighting effects and the overall build on this. Just keep in mind, since it is acrylic, it will be a little bit more fragile, so you probably don't want to be taking it with you on trips or anything like that. But I think for gaming, this is perfect for any setup, and I would recommend it to any gamer that needs an upgrade. That's it for this video. Link to the product is in the description below. If you found the video helpful, I'd love it if you could leave a thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave a comment below as well. Thanks for watching.